Brother Willie asked me if I didn't have anything on my mind to, uh, uh, to sing that song, and uh, I love that song. Um, powerful message in it. Um, and, you know, that, that kind of brings me, I, I want to talk a little bit about belief today. You know, I, uh, I, there's no question everybody, everybody here, everybody out there, uh, people who are watching, not watching, they believe in something. And, and even people that say, well, I have no faith, you're putting your faith uh, in yourself, in your own knowledge that you have no faith. There's no escaping it. You believe in something. You are, you are uh, if I can put it this way, you're, you're placing your eternal uh, 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 life or your, your eternal stay in something. And, and so I want to talk to you a little bit about belief. Because uh, I find that there's a lot of people, they, they, they misunderstand exactly what that word means. A lot of times, Brother Willie, they, they, people think, and I did too for the longest time, Brother, about that believing was just an acknowledgement. It's like, I believe that there's a moon. And I do believe that there is a moon. I believe there's a sun. I believe there's other planets. I believe that there's other states. I believe there's other countries. You know, I've not been to all the countries, but I still believe they're there. But you know what? I'm not surrendering to those places. I'm not putting my trust in all those things for my salvation. I just believe. And I think a lot of people today, uh, Brother Stephen, they think that as long as they just believe that they're okay. And they don't really understand what the Scripture teaches. And, and with that, I want to go to probably the most famous verse, the one you hear all the time. And, and of course, uh, uh, it seems like that's what we do all the time. We'll pull a verse here and pull a verse there. Listen, friends, you've got to make sure that it all matches up with Scripture, the entire thing. And, but, but I love this verse, and uh, I believe that uh, if, we, if we really dive in and we look at it, it teaches us something. Of course, I'm talking about John 3, 16. And, and the Bible says here, it says, For God so loved the world. So you know what? It starts out with God. It ends with God. Uh, I believe the Bible teaches me that, uh, uh, that He is the author and the finisher of my faith. And, and so, so today, friends, uh, He is Alpha, He is Omega. He is the beginning, He is the end. It starts right here with God. And, and God loves the world. And, and you know what? A lot of times uh, we play on words and things along this line. And, and, and we need to understand what He's saying here because we'll sometimes think that the world is out here, is the earth. It is the dirt, is this and that, and that's not what it's talking about here. And, and a lot of times we'll say, uh, 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 Brother Corey, that uh, uh, a lot of times we'll say things like, uh, uh, well, he's out in the world, uh, the things of the world, the, the pleasures of the world. You know what? That's not what he's talking about here. Uh, friends, uh, uh, what he's saying here when he says, for God so loved the world, uh, he's talking about the people in the world. We need to understand that God loves you. He loved me. Uh, he loves me today. He loves you. And friends, I don't care uh, what state you're in. I don't care, uh, friends, uh, what your mindset is. Uh, it makes no difference if you're a Christian or if you're not a Christian. God loves you. He loved the world. And that's what the Bible teaches. We need to understand that. And it's not just that He says He loves us. If we go on, it says that He gave. You know what? Uh, friends, He loved us so much that He gave us something. Uh, friends, what did He give us? He gave us His only begotten Son. And you know what? Uh, there's a lot of people uh, that they, they could care less. Uh, they don't believe it anyway. Uh, they would want something else. Uh, they they, they, they trump on His mercies, uh, but it is the greatest gift uh, uh, ever given to mankind, and that is the Lamb of God, the only begotten of the Father, the only one that could do a work in us that nobody could do, the only one that could pay a debt, uh, friends, that we owe uh, that nobody else could pay. You know what? If we think along the natural lines, some of us may have a lot of debt. And you know what? If somebody came
came by, uh, Brother Blake, and he uh, came by and he paid our debt. And he paid our natural debt. He may pay off your car loans, your personal loans, your credit cards, all these things. I uh, may pay all your debts. You know what? You'd think awful highly of that person. Matter of fact, you'd probably give them some praise. Uh, you'd be in their debt, wouldn't you? Uh, no doubt if they came to you asking for something, you know what? You'd say, you know, I'm kind of in your debt. I believe I'll pay you that. Uh, but you see, here's something. Jesus came to pay a debt that we all owed and we could not pay for it. Naturally, we can pay for things. Uh, you know what? We might not be able to pay it all sometimes, uh, but we can go out and earn things. We can get money. We can do that. Uh, you could even uh, uh, maybe win the lottery or something. You can get the money, uh, friends, uh, and you have the ability, even if it's by chance, uh, to be able uh, to pay off your debt. But this is something you cannot pay. You cannot pay the sin debt. Uh, but friends, Jesus came to pay that on your behalf. He took your punishment. Uh, he went to the cross and paid your debt. And friends, He did it, uh, the Bible says right here, because He loved you. And, and so that's what it's saying here. It says uh, uh, that He done that. And, and let's go on. It says uh, that whosoever, uh, not long ago we had t-shirts made, Brother Willie, uh, uh, that says that I'm a whosoever. You know what? Uh, it seems like here in, in today's time we're trying to divide all kinds of people. We're trying to put them in this category or in that category or whatever. Uh, listen, uh, friends, Jesus didn't do that. He tore down the that wall of petition. Uh, we're all in the same boat. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, we all deserve a devil's hell. It doesn't matter what nationality you are. It makes no difference what your sex is. Uh, friends, it makes no difference uh, what you've done or what you've not done. We deserve a devil's hell. We've all sinned. And here he says, whosoever. Uh, so friends, uh, uh, he's not saying this uh, uh, this kind or this people or that uh, thing or over here. He's saying, uh, whosoever. That's you, me. That's all we all have, the opportunity that Brother Stephen was talking about. The opportunity, don't let that opportunity uh, go by. It says, whosoever believeth. Uh, friends, uh, uh, whosoever believeth. Uh, listen, you have to believe. Uh, we don't say that you, you must believe. Uh, the Bible is very clear on that. Uh, but what I want to get to today, uh, Brother Willie, is what that really means. It's not just an acknowledgement. It's not just a, a saying, well, yeah, I believe. You know what? I believed in Jesus my whole life. Uh, I cannot ever remember a time that I did not believe in Jesus. When I was a little boy, I believed in Jesus. I said my prayers and you could not have convinced me that I wasn't going to go to heaven. Uh, even when I got up uh, in my uh, uh, youth, uh, uh, friends, listen, I would go out and I, I enjoyed the things of the world. I, I followed after Satan. I was a follower of Satan, but I believed in Jesus. Jesus. You couldn't convince me otherwise. I believe there was a Jesus. I believe He died on the cross for me. I believe that He was the Son of God. And I believed I was going to heaven. But I was not a follower of Him. I was not a disciple of Him. I didn't go to church. I didn't read His Word. I, I didn't really care about what all it taught. I, I had no uh, uh, inkling about what was this going. I was going about my own pace, doing my own thing. And I see a lot of that today. Uh, you'll see uh, people uh, uh, out of one side of their mouth, they're saying all kinds of vain things, uh, uh, hateful things, uh, hating the world, hating the people in it. And then on the other side, they'll spout out a Bible verse saying, I believe believe. Listen, friends, uh, the Bible is very clear about that. You, you can't hold on to God and hold on to the world. It don't work that way. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about this. Uh, it, it does say that whosoever believeth in Him. And listen, you must believe in Christ. Everybody has a belief and everybody says, well, I believe it this way or I believe it that way. Or, or, you must believe in Jesus. You must believe all of about Jesus. 
You must believe that he was born of a virgin. You must believe, friends, that he's lived a sinless life, being the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God. You must believe that he, uh, uh, friends, went to Calvary and paid your sin debt. You must believe. You must accept these things. Uh, Friends, listen. uh, But this is not just a natural belief. This is not just a head religion. You must believe. In the book of Romans, it says you must believe from the heart. I want you to realize, friends, this belief, it's not, it's a verb. It's action. We don't work our way in. We can't work our way in. The Bible is clear on that. We're not saved by works. We're saved by grace. God's grace through faith. And that through faith is in Jesus Christ on what He done. That, friends, and what we call it here, uh, we call it surrender. You must completely, I hear people all the time saying, oh, I accept Jesus. And what they mean by that a lot of times is they accept Him on their terms. Friends, He will accept you on His terms. And that's what it's all about. I I, I can write your name uh, uh, in a church book. Uh, uh, We can do all these things. But it's Him that writes your name in the Lamb's book of life. And so friends, uh, uh, it comes down uh, to has He accepted you? Have you come the proper way? Have you come surrendering yourself? And have you come believing? You know, friends, and again, that's what the Bible is teaching us here. Because if you believe in Him in that way, the Bible says there's a reward for that. It says that you should not perish, but have everlasting life. I I want you to realize, friends, that uh, again, people will take a verse here and they'll take a verse there. In Ephesians 1.13, it says, After that ye have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So this is, this is telling us that yes, you must believe. Uh, there is no getting out of it. You must believe uh, in Jesus Christ. But friends, listen. What that means is, and I want to get to a scripture here if I can. I, I want to go into uh, 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 Hebrews. And I want to start in uh, verse 10, or chapter 10, verse 35. And and, and if you can, get your Bibles out and go. And I I want us to read that. I want us to see what it says. We're going to read through uh, 35 through 39. It says, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God. You see, you must do the will of God. And I'll come back to that in just a moment, Brother Willie. It says, after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. You see, we got to take this whole thing together. We must believe. We have to believe. If you don't believe, you'll never step out on faith. Uh, uh, friends, listen. Uh, uh, Jesus, I, I firmly believe that it was, it was God that took the first step. He's the author. He's the finisher. It was God that made, uh, friends, that first step because He loved us. He sent us something. Uh, and friends, He's asking you to put your faith and your trust. Uh, uh, friends, He's asking you to surrender. Uh, uh, you must give it all over to Him, uh, not only on your terms but on his terms and that's what he's saying uh, friends uh, it says after ye have done the will of God well what is the will of God I find in 2 Peter 3 9 it teaches us uh, what the will of God is and friends uh, God is not willing uh, that any should perish uh, but that all come to repentance You see, a lot of places, a lot of people, a lot of times we leave off repentance. You see, that's part of the belief. If you truly believe, it'll cause you to do something. It'll cause you to move. Uh, listen, I, I've seen it time and time again, brother. Uh, where, uh, and, and you young brothers that are here and, and you young Christians out there, I see it time and time where people, uh, they surrender themselves to Christ. You know what? Where was your principles whenever you uh, were on your knees begging for your soul? Uh, where were your principles and all your uh, uh, mighty deeds and mighty things that you believed in on this subject or that subject? Where were they whenever you was calling out uh, to Jesus? 
when you call out to the name of the Lord. Uh, listen, where were they? I'll tell you where they were. You, they were thrown away. You can care less uh, because if you don't humble yourself before the Lord, if you don't surrender yourself completely, uh, you didn't become a Christian. Uh, you didn't become a child of God. Uh, so uh, you th- and for, for some reason, uh, once we get saved, Brother Willie, then all of a sudden we get high and mighty and we stand on our principles. We're going to say, oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, I won't do that. You know what? I, I believe this or I believe that. I, I find it this way or that way. Friends, listen, you need to get yourself out of the way. Amen. Too many times I see people they, 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 the Lord has come in and did a mighty work in their life and they're sitting at home saying, well, I have my principles. I'm not going to attach myself to this group of people because they actually believe that or they practice this or they listen. God is telling you to go somewhere. God did not send His apostles all over setting up churches for you not to join or for you not to attach yourself to, for you not to go and worship with. Uh, You'll never convince me of that. The Bible is too clear. They were set up for a reason, brothers. And that was for you to go and for you to work in. And how do you work? A lot of people lie. You don't have to be baptized. Listen, friends. uh, The Bible teaches us uh, that it is an answer to a good conscience toward God. Uh, Listen, uh, uh, friends, it's something Jesus Jesus did himself and said that it was to fulfill all righteousness. Don't get all high and mighty after the Lord saved you and start standing on your principles. You know what? God doesn't need people with principles. God needs humble people. That's who he uses. That's who, friends, uh, uh, he's going he's to put out here to go and to reach people and to talk to people. It's not the high and mighty that come out uh, that, that think they know this or they know that. Uh, listen, friends, and listen, I'm going to tell you this. I, I preach to myself just as much as I do anybody else. I, I'm guilty. I know that I am. And so uh, there's so many times I have to go back and I have to fall up on my knees and say, Lord, here I am again. Uh, but you know what? Uh, friends, listen. I want you to realize uh, that God is faithful if you truly believe, if you truly repent, if you truly surrender. Friends, He's always there for you. The Bible says, For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them that draw back into perdition, but of them that believe. To what? The Bible says to believe to the saving of the soul. So you see, friends, there's a lot of people that believe. But do you believe to the saving of the soul? You see, friends, uh, uh, those that, uh, uh, that just acknowledge the way I did when I was a young boy, I listen, I believe, but I would draw back into my way. I would draw back into the ways of the world, if you will. I, I didn't put Jesus first. Uh, he was the furthest thing from my mind. Uh, even though every night I said my prayers. Uh, friends, uh, listen, uh, it was become a ritual to me. That's all it was. Uh, friends, it wasn't until uh, Jesus paid me a visit one time. He convicted me and showed me exactly what I was, exactly where I was going, and friends, what I had deserved and what I'd earned in this life. And friends, it wasn't until then that I, and listen, I tried. I did this and I did that, brothers. I I did all these things that you've heard. I tried to get good enough. I tried to do this and do all those. But listen, friends, it fell to nothing. You don't have to do that. The Bible never teaches that. It teaches you must believe to the saving of the soul. You must trust Him completely. What He did for you on Calvary, you must put your complete trust in Him. You must surrender completely to Him. Uh, Throw away what your principles are and the way you think it ought to be. Uh, Friends, listen. Uh, We're all in this same boat. We've all sinned. And we all deserve a devil's hell. But you can be a whosoever. Because I got news for you, even though we're in that same boat, brothers, Jesus died for you too. We're in that boat as well. 
Jesus paid the penalty for you. Jesus took your sin upon His back and took it up to Calvary and nailed it to a cross. So friends, today, I, I want you to realize that there is, a, a friends, an acknowledgement believing, and we see a lot of that today. But I want you to have a, be a believer to the saving of the soul. I, I'm going to leave you with this. A lot of people still say, well, I don't understand that. I don't live... Be careful. The devils believe. But it ain't going to do them any good, does it? 1 Corinthians chapter, one, verse, or chapter 15, verse 1, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. In the Corinth church, you know what? They was doing all kinds of things wrong. They was messing up left and right. But he's telling them, I preached to you and you received it. They were doing it in ignorance. Uh, so he was correcting them. You know, a lot of times people don't want correction, Brother Willie. But we need it sometimes. And it says uh, that they received his preaching and wherein they stand, by which also ye are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless... Ye have believed in vain. You see, you can believe in vain, or you can believe to the saving of the soul. Don't let it just stop at where it says you must believe. I hear it watered down to you just have to believe. Now listen, you do have to believe. The Bible is clear. But it goes on. If you search it out, if you take all of Scripture, you'll see that it's not just acknowledging that Jesus is who He says He is. It's following Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. It's not the hearer only. It's the doer. Not that we work it out. Not, not that we work, remember, we're saved by grace. God's grace. He provided it all. Through faith in what His Son did for us on the cross. And friends, that, believe, that brings in repentance. It's all together. Yeah. And when you believe and surrender, remember, He's not willing any should perish, but all come to repentance. Yeah. When you believe, the Bible says repent. I love the word surrender, as you can tell. When you do that completely, He then will do a work in you that no man can do. I don't want anybody. I believe the Bible teaches us to make sure uh, our calling and election sure. Don't fall up on something short. Don't be like I was back in my youth when I thought, oh, hey, I believe, so that's all there is to it. And I lived a horrible life before the Lord. Friends, listen, I want you to believe to the saving of the soul. And that only comes through obedience. To Jesus Christ. I love you. I hope that this has helped you. I want you to know. God provided everything that you will ever need. He performed the work on Calvary. And throughout his life. We leave that off sometimes. He lived the perfect life. Being the perfect sacrifice. The Lamb of God. He did it all for you. And he's asking you. To put complete trust in Him on what He done for you on Calvary. And that He'll come again. I believe that to the saving of the soul. It's my very being. It's what I put all my belief in. All my trust in. And I hope and pray that that's your case too. If not, friends, don't let this opportunity pass you by. So I love you. And God bless you. And thank you for your prayers.